Hello friends. Today I would like to start a course on engineering circuit analysis. Uh, this course will be limited to linear circuit analysis. So when you hear the word linear circuit analysis or let me call it as LCA, naturally the question that comes in our mind is there a non-linear circuit analysis? And the answer is yes, there is a non-linear circuit analysis and in fact most of the processes in nature is non-linear circuits, non-linear analysis. So the question comes then why we should use linear circuit analysis and let me tell that it is not only electrical or electronics or computer science people that use linear analysis, even other branches like mechanical engineering, civil engineering also use linear analysis because the linear analysis has the mathematics is easily solvable. It has an easily solvable mathematics and it gives us a intuitive understanding of the system. So basically what linear analysis does is that the process of non-linearity, the process has a region a small region where it has a linear area and we analyze in that area and we derive up our results. Now let us take a simple example here. For example, a person can read one page in five minutes. He can read one page in five minutes. It means that he can read two pages in ten minutes. Okay? And maybe he can read six pages in thirty minutes. Now a plot between time and pages with this information is actually a linear. This is a linear working area and we can derive many results from this. We can find out how many pages he has read in a particular period of time or when he reaches a particular page what might have been the time lapse. All this is easy. But however, we can never tell that the person can complete 100 pages in 500 minutes. This cannot be told. Why? Because the process might be linear only till maybe 30 minutes or an hour. Afterwards, the process might come down and the person might be reading more and more slowly. Now let us see what might be the non-linearities non which might be causing these things to happen. So one non-linearity which I can list here, one of the non-linearities could be fatigue. One of the non-linearity could be fatigue and other could be boredom, right? The boredom. The person is tired and the person is bored. So this might reduce his speed of reading. So in order to get an accurate model of his reading abilities, you will have to mathematically model fatigue, you will have to mathematically model boredom and put that into the equation. Now the problem with this is that all these factors are individual centric. Like two people will not have the same level of fatigue, two people will not have the same level of boredom. So these are not from universal equations. Therefore, if you just need reasonable accuracy, if, you, if your area of interest is accurate enough with linear circuit analysis, definitely go with linear circuit analysis. In case your area of interest is of very high accuracy, then you will have to factor in all the non-linearities which come into the process, then you will get an accurate model. Now, but in our case, in this entire course, we will be only going with linear circuit analysis so that our observations etc are not very complex to understand. So as far this course is concerned, the linear circuit analysis what we are going to consider can be divided into three major areas. One is the resistive and second is the time domain and third will be the frequency domain. Now in the resistive domain we will be only considering with resistors and the important thing here is that this entire area of resistive domain will be time independent. Time independent. And we will be learning a lot of powerful tools such as nodal analysis, mesh analysis, superposition theorem, Thevenin and Norton. Now, what 
comes in time domain. In time domain, you are having inductors and capacitors. And so, along with inductors and capacitors, we will be introducing integral terms and differential terms in our equations. But however, luckily, all these powerful techniques which we are going to learn in the resistive area can be used in the time domain area as well. Now, what does the frequency domain tell us? Actually, I have told you all earlier that the time domain analysis will have integration and differential operators. All these also make the mathematics a bit cluttered. So, in order to convert all those integral differential equations into simple algebraic equations, so all the integrations and uh, derivatives will be converted into simple algebraic equations in the frequency domain. So, this is the basic gist of the course what we are going to cover. So, let us dive into the subject and let me introduce three new terms to you. Three terms to you. One is charge. The second is current, the third one will be voltage. Now, all of you might be familiar with the word charge, it is the most fundamental uh, uh, quantity in electricity and charge has positive and charge has a negative type. So, there are two types of charge, one is the positive type, positive charge and is the negative charge. Usually these are associated with the protons and the negative is associated with the electrons. You all know what is an electron charge, it is minus 1.6 into 10 power minus 19 coulomb. And coulomb is the unit of charge. The unit of charge is coulomb. And the definition of 1 coulomb can be stated as such. 1 coulomb is measured. 1 coulomb is measured every second when 1 ampere of current passes through a wire. So this is not actually a very basic definition of the Coulomb. For a very basic definition, you can always go through a book on electromagnetic field theory. But because we are uh, considering circuit analysis here, this definition will be sufficient. So, let us define the next quantity. But before we go to the next quantity, let us give the representation. Usually, capital Q and small q uh, represent static charges, and a small q with a t represents a instantaneous charge. So this is time. This will vary with respect to time. It's an instantaneous charge. Now, let us define the second term, which is current. The current is a quantity which has a magnitude as well as a direction. So, what is the definition of current? Now, before that, if there is a transfer of charge, there is a transfer of charge, there is a transfer of charge, so usually there would be a transfer of energy. And it is this which is used in the concepts of power lines. Now, if there is a varying rate of transfer of charge, varying rate of transfer of charge, this is actually transfer of information and this is used in communication lines. This is used in communication lines. So basically current at a specified a specific point okay and a specific direction okay current at a specific point and a specific direction is the instantaneous rate the instantaneous rate at which net positive charge the net positive charge is moving past that point. Okay. So what this tells us is that the direction of current is the direction of the positive charge moving. This is a very important 
point here the direction of current is the direction of the positive charge wave now this is actually a historical inaccuracy but we have to live with it because initially people used to think that the cause of current was the movement of positive charge but over later they found out it was the electrons which actually caused the uh, was the cause of the flow of current but by that time all these conventions had come but over we will be following this positive current convention in which the direction of positive current is the direction of the positive charge move so let us put up these things which we have learned in an equation so current is the instantaneous rate of change of positive charge right so i is equal to dq by dt so now let us put dq is equal to i into dt let us integrate both sides we get dq is equal to and this is charge at t0 and let this be the charge at dt this will be integral of dt tan t0 and tan t it means the charge at tan t will be equal to integral of the current plus initial charge this is also an important equation mainly for problems related to graphs now with all this said i have already told you the current has a magnitude and the current has a direction so let us just put three cases here just for uh, just reinforcing our understanding let us take three cases here this is i1 of t okay this is like this this is i1 of t now, these are three cases a b and c now, as you can see in the first case there is no direction so this is wrong in the second case there is a direction but there is no magnitude so this is also not a meaningful representation of current but in this third case we can see that there is a magnitude and there is a direction therefore this is a meaningful representation of the current now another thing which i would like to uh, bring out here before winding up this session is that let us take a conductor here and the current is having a direction and it is moving at 3 amperes okay, in this direction now this is equivalent of reversing the current direction and telling that minus 3 amperes is going so these two are equivalent so when you reverse the current direction you reverse the uh, current magnitude okay and then these two are equivalent now let us take a simple example to understand this point the question is electrons are moving the electrons are moving from left to right the electrons are moving from left to right and the current created due to this movement is 1 milliampere so you have to find i1 and i2 let us see what is i1 and i2 so this is a conductor this is given to be the directions of i1 and i2 now to approach this problem let us see electrons are moving from left to right it means that the positive charge will be moving from right to left that means because the positive charge is moving from right to left okay the positive current also must be from right to left in this case you can clearly see it is the current i2 which is moving from right to left therefore the current i2 will be in plus 1 milliampere and i1 which is in the opposite direction that is from left to right we have minus 1 milliampere so before concluding let us stress on this point once again that the direction of the positive current is the direction of the positive charge this is very important so please make sure that you understand this point because in almost all problems we are going to face this choice 
of the minus current and the plus current. I hope you enjoyed this video and uh, please like, share and subscribe the channel and I will meet you in the next lecture. Thank you.